Well, today I'm trying to do a train blog. This one features the Lionel GG1s. First, we're going to see the 2330 twin motored Brunswick Green 5 stripe GG1. Then we're going to see the 2360 maroon with a solid gold stripe GG1. Now, the Dark green GG1 or Brunswick green is pulling about 26 cars plus the caboose. And I think the 2360 is pulling 10 MPC era passenger cars. Some are Pennsylvania and some are Powhatan, Arrow, Norfolk, and Western. The 2330 dates from 1950. Now, according to Doyle, that's Frank Doyle, not the card guy. I'm not saying according to Hoyle. I'm saying according to Doyle, the 2330 dates from 1950, and he gave it a rarity rating of 5. I bought mine back in the 1970s from a train collector who lived in Cairo, Georgia. That's spelled C A R. I-R-O, Cairo, not Cairo like in Egypt, but it's spelled the same way. But in Georgia, it's called Cairo. As I said, I paid $60 for that locomotive, which was a bargain. I had a choice of that or the rare Hudson, and of course, most of the train collectors would say I was crazy not to have gotten the Hudson. But I never have liked the Hudson because it's really oversized compared to all, most of my other Lionel trains. <laughs> Now, here comes the 2360. The 2360, according to Doyle, dates from about 1956. It's a very rare engine because it has the solid gold stripe. And it's not a decal stripe. It's solid gold. Gold paint, that is, not real gold. I wish it was real gold. And it's a rarity rating of around five or six, something like that as well. It is pulling a number of MPC era extruded aluminum passenger cars, both Pennsylvania and Norfolk and Western Powhatan Arrow. Here you see it just stalled. I've had a persistent power drop in that far back corner, which is located furthest away from my ZZ1, from my ZW transformer, which is powering this train. I have run wire after wire after wire over there to correct that, and I think the problem is with the fast track. I just have not been able to get rid of that power drop. Now, once this engine is warmed up, and it's a big, heavy engine with lots of gears, and the grease gets cold, and the It'll sit for a while, but once it's warmed up, it'll make it through there without stalling. Now, with respect to one of these stalls, I knocked the front truck off the track. It has six wheels on the front truck, and that caused it to uh, knock some automobiles on my layout out of the way. But this locomotive was one I bought in the early 1970s. I ran an ad in the newspaper. Somebody called. I went to their house. He took me out to an aluminum shed in his backyard. In a box was the GG1. I offered him $50. He said no. I left. As I was walking in the door back home, I got the phone call from him. Come back and get it. I want the $50. So I did. So I paid $50 for the maroon one, $60 for the Brunswick green one. Now these GG1s are, have magnet traction, they're twin motored, they're very heavy and very powerful. If you back that passenger train up onto the siding through the S curve, if you're not gentle on the throttle, it'll blow those cars right off the track. It has so much power and it will accelerate very quickly. So it takes a steady and gentle hand on the throttle to back this thing up successfully. These GG1s are absolutely wonderful locomotives, especially if you can get the twin-engined version. The other thing about them is the 
well, in a steam engine, we'd call it a boiler. The top is die cast as well. It's all metal, and it has pantographs that can be wired up to operate off an overhead catenary. I've never done that, however. Now, this is another 2330. This one I acquired recently in a trade. Somebody had clipped the wires. The E-unit is defective. It has twin motors, of course. It dates from 1950. There you see the headlight. Next to the headlight is the bicycle type horn. It has, there's a pantograph that clips onto the top. There's two of them. They open, but they'll snap shut if you push it down all the way. I'm showing here how it's sprung. It has a headlight at either end, but the one at the other end is missing. That's the bicycle horn. That's the first motor. That's the reverse unit. It's lever up. That's the whistle horn relay, and that's the second motor. And as I said, the, the horn is a bicycle-type horn from the 1950s, which runs on a 1.5-volt D-cell battery. It's wise not to store these things with a battery in there because those batteries will leak and damage the engine. Now I'm going to show some E-unit pieces and bits. These are E-units that are either available to be used or not currently being used, but that's what the reverse unit or E-unit looks like when it's removed from the engine. E-unit is a term Lionel used. This is what the E-unit fingers look like. They commonly go bad. One of these has four fingers. The other has two fingers with a heat shield on it. You're better off starting over with new E-unit fingers than trying to salvage the old ones. The E-unit will pop apart. I'm pulling out the ratchet. That ratchet is, is electromagnetically activated and it pulls on the drum on the teeth on the drum, causing it to rotate. What goes wrong commonly with these drums is the little nubs at each end break off or a tooth breaks off. Here's the nub. That's a tooth. When you install a drum, make sure it's facing in the right direction so that the ratchet can pull on it. I call it a ratchet or a ratchet lever. I'm not sure what an expert would call it, but that's what I call it. You can see the clipped wires. The headlight's missing from that end, but I have it. Now, this particular 2330 has a better looking top than the one I was running on the layout. Less fading. The Brunswick green color shows up better. I just pointed to the little nubs which the pantographs clip onto. I hope to do a follow up video of the repair of this engine and show it running. Thanks for watching.